we're, we're back, Corey. Day five of Coronacation <laughs> with Corey and Andrew. Thank you for coming up with the name. It's fun. Okay, uh, so let's see. Today we wanted to just start off by saying thank you for sending in your videos. Yeah. It's been fun for us to watch and to put them in. So keep those coming. You can always email Andrew Brooks, Corey Jones, and... At SoHillCC.com. Well, a brooks and yeah. c jones yeah. it's in the first video you can check that out um but make sure you're sending in videos we love those being a part of this Absolutely. and doing this together and it also gives you something to do if you get bored at That's all right so drop us a video for now though we want to just jump in with some of those videos so check this out Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and I can't wait to share this with you. It's my Bible. The Bible is filled with stories about people just like you and me. There's grown-ups and kids, moms and dads, brothers and sisters. Some of them make wise choices. Some of them don't. But they all share one thing, the same loving Father. In the Bible, we discover how God created each one of us and loves us so much, He made a way to rescue us, even when we turned our backs on Him. When we choose to follow Jesus, God wipes the slate clean. That's true forgiveness. And I've got five stories from the life of Jesus to show you what it can look like. We get started in the book of Matthew. Here, Peter asks Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Up to seven times? Peter's ready to pat himself on the back for being oh so generous until Jesus tells a story. See, there's this servant who owes 10,000 bags of gold, but his master forgives the whole debt. I mean, what? The servant has his life back. Yes! <laughs> Time to pass on that same freedom to others, right? Well, You'd think. Time for a quick hop to the book of Luke. Jesus is passing through Jericho and everyone is so excited. Even a guy named Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus isn't big on crowds. No one likes him because he collects money for the Romans and takes extra for himself. Still. He's so determined to see Jesus that he's willing to go out on a limb. Let's go back to Matthew for another reminder from Jesus. Here, Jesus is teaching his followers on a mountainside. A huge crowd gathers as he shares with them how God wants us to live. Suppose you are offering your gift at the altar, and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift. First, go and make peace with them. Jesus says that making things right with others is super important. In fact, forgiving others is one of the best ways to show your love for God. Let's wrap up in Luke now for a two-part epic. Here, Jesus challenges the religious leaders with the story of a young man who wants to live it up. The young man demands money from his father. In fact, it would be all the money he'd get if his father were dead. Ouch. Then the young man takes off for parts unknown and wastes every penny on expensive clothes and parties. The son is finally forced to take care of pigs to survive. 
I mean, even his dad's servants have it way better than this. But there's no way he can go home now, right? Stay with us to wrap up in the final week. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> Dad has forgiven his foolish son. He's even throwing a party to welcome him home. But the kid's big brother isn't so happy. I mean, big bro has done the right thing his whole life. And now little bro gets a party? Even though he's a total mess up? I mean, what is up with that? Big bro may be right, but holding on to his anger can't make him happy. God forgives each of us when we ask, but we can't live in freedom until we choose to release those who have wronged us too. That's true forgiveness. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me. I have loved every day getting together with you to look at the life app of forgiveness. Forgiveness is such a big deal. It's, it's a word that goes inside of you. It changes you forever and it changes the world around you. Everyone that you come in contact with can see how forgiveness is changing you. And man, this doesn't just happen. Like you can't watch this video and then automatically be forgiving everyone. You really have to be intentional. You gotta work hard and remember to forgive. You really let me down on the job. I mean, like the fact that you've dropped all your responsibilities, you've dropped the What ball, are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking to my roommate. Uh, yeah, this, this, this total lack of responsibility is, it's just, it's ridiculous. And when you get home today from work, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about this, okay? We're gonna talk about how you can better handle things around the house. All right, so, all right, uh, love you, wifey, bye. Hey, um, just, uh, so <laughs> you, you interrupted our thing to leave that voicemail for your wife. Yeah, yeah, this, she's so busy doing her job at work that she's letting up on her responsibilities around the house. Okay. Just laundry, for example. So, <laughs> while you're I don't, here I don't filming these story. videos for the kids, yeah, and your wife's at work, right? You called and left a voicemail to complain to her about not doing laundry. your laundry. Yes, that's the deal that we have. You see, okay, her deal. Mm -hmm. is to do the laundry, mm -hmm. do the cooking, mm -hmm. and do the cleaning around the house. Okay. Wow. And she's falling down on the job. She's not doing her responsibilities. And so... So like, you've arranged this, and yes, you're just, doing the lawn work, you're cleaning the cars out, you're you're looking at me weird. No, because one, um, she won't let me step, step foot in or around that minivan unless she's with me. Prized possession. Um, and... Second, she likes to cut the grass, so I don't, I don't do that. So then you're taking care of the kids? And mm, sometimes, yeah. But the, what are you doing then? What's filling your time? Oh, uh, that's eat. I mean, it's a pretty good deal, actually. You know, so I, I'm in charge of the, the TV shows. So, like, I find all of our TV shows that we do, mm -hmm. like on Netflix and... Mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, YouTube TV, and yeah, so I sift through all the, the shows because, I mean, you guys know, there's a lot. Oh, Disney Plus, that's another one. Okay. There's a lot, and okay. so I find, it's my responsibility to find the good shows so that when it's her time to watch TV, she knows what shows are good, what shows aren't, so that she's not wasting her time. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. You... You called your wife, hold on. You called your wife and left a voicemail complaining about the laundry while your job is to watch TV. 
It's a mutual agreement. Then why did you bring your laundry? Because it's do it yourself. That's what this whole thing is about. And I the theme I, for the month. Yeah, I thought that I thought that I could bring it to you so that you could do it yourself. So that I can do your laundry. Yeah, but we're gonna make a <laughs> we're gonna make a game out of it. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh huh. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my timer out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the laundry. That sounds great. You're creative. gonna fold it. You came up I, with this all by yourself. Yeah. I'm gonna time you to see how fast it takes you to do my laundry. Huh. You can do it yourself. What a fun game. Uh, how yeah. about this? How about a... Uh, wow. How about you call your wife back and uh, apologize, ask for forgiveness, our word for the month. Sorry, Kelly. And, uh, oh, um, we can play this game together but I gotta... and watch our next video how about that? Okay, that works. Okay, let's hope this goes well. What's up everybody, now, my name is Will Smith. I am the worship leader for first service at 456. And right now I've come to talk to y'all about what one of my favorite verses is in the Bible. Um, I have a lot of these favorite verses, but one of my favorites is Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And it's in something called the Great Commission. It's after Jesus died and it's after he defeated death and rose up from the grave. He's with his disciples right now. And um, I'm gonna give you, um, gonna have read a little bit uh, before that. It's um, verse 16 first says, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. And I love uh, I love this part because it shows the disciples weren't perfect either. We're not perfect. And neither were disciples. They doubted too. And we're going to doubt. We're going to struggle. But Jesus is there for us. And Jesus came and told them, um, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. And in verse 19, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I love how Jesus says the word go. It's like he's telling us, to be fast, kind of like kind of like a race. Um, and we're not competing to see how many people we how how many people we can show love, but we, he wants us to be fast. He wants us to be um, show to love as many people as possible. Um, he he call as uh, followers of Jesus, we're called to show the same love and the same grace and the same forgiveness as Jesus showed us. Whenever he died on the cross, whenever he left heaven and came down on earth to live a perfect life, and then. He was cut. He was cursed. That he was spit on, and he was tortured and beat, and he and he suffered on a cross, and he died for us. Just let just let that sink in. Jesus died for us, and that he wanted to show that he loves us so much. I know a lot of y'all are struggling. I struggle too. Everyone struggles, but I want to let y'all know that if y'all feel like y'all are alone, if y'all feel like there isn't anyone in this world who loves you, know that there is one person who loves you, at least one person. His name is Jesus. He loves every single one of us on this earth. He knows every single one of us. He died for us. He wanted to show y'all that you are given a second chance, that you are forgiven. And you, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, he wants us to show others the same love, grace, and forgiveness that he showed us. And so that's one of my favorite verses ever. And a lot of times we feel like we can't make it because um, we're going to stumble, we're going to fall. And that's true. We are going to fall. We're going to stumble. But Jesus tells us, I am with you even to the end of the age. Jesus will always be with us. He'll always be there to help you. He'll always be there to help you back up when you get knocked down. He will always love you no matter what happens, no matter what you do. In his eyes, you will always be perfect. You will always be loved. And I just wanted, I just wanted to let y'all guys know that, that um, this is one of my favorite verses. And I just wanted to tell y'all that as followers of Jesus, as Christians, Jesus wants us to show love to others. And so I just pray that y'all are able to show love and grace and forgiveness to as many people as possible. I just want to let y'all guys know that I love y'all and I hope you have a great week. Next up, we're going to play a game called Which is Different? It sounds easy. It's not. There's three pictures that are going to come up on the screen. You need to find... Like they all look the same? Well, they're close. They're so close, but there's one little detail one that is wrong. Okay. You're going to have to get close. I would suggest for once in your life getting close to the screen to make sure that you can Ooh. find it. 
If you're able to find it, point it out. But there's gonna be a timer, and if the timer clicks and you still haven't found it, at least just point to one of the three pitchers. Maybe you'll be lucky. Andrew, you think you can beat your high score of two? I'm not good at games so far, so <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. We'll let's, see. Let's let's check it out. I think you're gonna have a good time. Good luck. Good luck. So, how'd you do? Did you jump? Did they figure out what's different? Did you? Did you? I got them all. You got, well. How did you I, do? <laughs> I didn't get any of them right. Oh, it's okay. Next, so, next game. Why don't you probably? Won't. I need to pick a game soon. Yes. Yes, you should. Which of these is the number two? <laughs> this one, this one, or this one? Oh, Corey. You'd win. Hey, you know what? We are so glad that you guys joined us again today. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Mm. Um, but before you go, mm. Corey has something to tell you. He, he's he got a show he wants you to check out. I do. Our friends at Orange have an awesome show called The So-and-So Show. Every week they put out content where it's around what we're talking about, what we're learning about, about forgiveness mm. and our Bible story for the week. And so I want you to go just in YouTube, go so and so show and you'll find it. It's, it's really easy and it's great. It's a great video. I watch it and I don't have kids yeah. and I'm a grown man. So I've I'm just saying, you, I've seen you're going to enjoy good. it. Go check out the so and so show. And tomorrow we will see you for another episode of... The Coronacation with Corey and Andrew. See you tomorrow. Do it like that. Yeah. Make it. Yeah. There you go.